I'm about to teach you how to hustle. Right here, right now is the absolute most important time to make sure that you have some extra money coming in because we don't know what else is going to happen. 2020 literally just came out of nowhere and hit us like a truck with unfortunate events that have impacted the entire world. And I don't think most of us expected the financial impact that this year would have on us. Sure, you can save money, that's always an option, but how long is that saved money gonna last you? And more importantly, how do you save money when you lose your one stream of income? You can't. So I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna show you seven brilliant side hustles that are social distancing friendly. You gotta let them know. Stay back now. Nope, get back. Nope, you are not six feet. Stay back, stay back. You know what I'm saying? That fire lets them know you're serious. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant and I'm about to show you seven brilliant side hustle ideas that earn hundreds and hundreds of dollars every single day. And on top of that, with these seven ideas I'm about to give you, each of them has several examples for each idea that I give so that you're gonna be able to come up with creative ideas of your own for your own unique side hustle that pertains to you. Let's get into the video. So it's holiday season right now and we just had Black Friday and now it's Cyber Monday and a lot of items are going on sale, specifically electronic items. Now if you can get a massive discount on something like let's say 40 to 60% off and then you keep it and you hold on to it for a few months and then you resell it at retail, guess what? You can make a solid profit off of that. This is also known as flipping items. And when you do this, you also have to look into opportunities that you can benefit off of supply and demand. What I really wanna stress here is you've really gotta think outside of the box with this. When I talk about looking at supply and demand, I'm also talking about looking at what is currently happening around you right now. And here's how I want you to think about it. What season is it? What kind of weather do we have outside? What are people wanting? What products are coming out very soon? For example, the PlayStation 5 just got released earlier this month. Guess what? The people who understood supply and demand, they knew. They were like, man, a lot of people are going to want the PlayStation 5, but there's not going to be a lot of PlayStation 5s to give. They're going to be very scarce and they're going to go very quick, especially if you don't pre-order them. So what did they do? They figured out a way to get their hands on PlayStation 5s early for retail price, and then they would buy a bunch of them, like let's say five or six of them, and then they would turn around and sell them for double the price or almost double the price, and that's gonna get them a very solid profit. And it's all because they took on the opportunity of supply and demand. Think about right now, we, we are living in a very strange time where we have to socially distance ourselves. Guess what? People make masks. Guess what? Those masks sell. There's a demand for masks that are comfortable. My face gets itchy because I have facial hair when I put a mask on, so I want something that feels good on my face. I want you to think about what season it is. What kind of weather are we having? Is it winter time? Do you live in a place where it snows a lot? Because if you live in a place that snows a lot, you have to deal with a driveway full of snow or a patio or a deck full of snow. And guess what? These are shady areas where it takes forever for the snow to melt, typically speaking now. So that means you have to get out there and shovel. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a chore to do. No one wants to do it. Trust me, people will pay you to shovel that snow out of the driveway, even their decks or patios. They, they don't want to deal with that. I mean, think about it. When it's hot outside, what do you see? What did you see growing up as a kid? You probably saw lemonade stands, ice cream trucks when it's hot outside, right? You already know people don't mind paying the extra price for something that's cold and refreshing in the middle of the summer. If you live in an area with a bunch of trees, you might see people raking leaves in the middle of the fall. And guess what? A lot of folks don't want to do that. People would pay you to rake their leaves. As you can see, that's pairing the two ideas of looking at supply and demand, but also looking at the current things that are happening. Speaking of seasons, this one summer when I was like 15, I had to have pulled in like $700 within a few days because I was working side by side with my grandfather and it wasn't even my side hustle. It was actually his side hustle. He had a side business of pressure washing that he only really did during the summer. I was like, hey grandpa, I wanna, I wanna help you out. So we did, we got together and we went to work. We pressure washed the driveways, we pressure washed the patios, pressure washed the front, side, back of the house, and and, you know, we, we did some good work. We'd only go to like two to three houses per day to pressure wash them, but I don't think people really understand just how much money there is in pressure washing. 
I had to really take into account who my grandfather's customers were. We're talking about people who are middle-aged, who live in a ginormous neighborhood where everything is just really nice and pristine and the houses are at the very minimum like 2,000 square feet, but most of them were well over 2,000 square feet. And you've also got to consider the fact that when you pressure wash a house, you're not only getting paid for your labor, but you're getting paid for the area that you're covering. So if you're just getting the house, that's still a lot of area. But if you get the house plus the driveway plus the patio, that's a lot of area to cover. So like I said, I was only 15, but the first day I, I made like $75. I only helped pressure wash one house that day. Then the second day I got $150 because we got more houses. Then the third day I got $300. That's, that's a pretty good deal for a 15 year old. I mean, you consider minimum wage job compared to that $300 in one day, a minimum wage job can't compete with that. It just can't. And that was just my cut from what I was making helping out my grandfather. But if you consider what the entire business made, like what he actually made, that was like at least three to $400 per house we went to. So if you wanted to pressure wash like five to six houses in one day, then that's thousands of dollars a day. Even if you just made $1,000 a day, that's a very good profit. And it's just a side hustle, please. And maybe it's his mindset that I grew up seeing that really got me into wanting to create my own income for myself because I always had a side hustle growing up just throughout childhood. But the one side hustle that I found to be most profitable in my adult life, at least in my early 20s, cost me absolutely nothing to set up but it still earned me at least an extra $200 every single month. And it's all because of a talent that I've been developing since I was in middle school, like at 11 years old, and that was drumming. And you see, I was able to monetize that for one because I was able to build my credibility. I had drums all throughout high school, all throughout college, and I've performed and traveled to several cool places. I even got to perform at a Carolina Panthers game in front of like 80,000 people. And I'm talking about the year they were actually good you know, the keep pounding year. But basically that credibility allowed me to build a customer base of parents who wanted their kids to learn how to drum. So I taught young aspiring drummers and I kept it very simple and very basic. I taught them how to read sheet music and I taught them the basic fundamentals of drumming. And that was very successful because I got to do what I love to do. And if they were more advanced, I could teach them more advanced things. But bottom line, I earned $40 an hour just doing that. But I mean, you don't even have to go that far to build like a side business like I did. I mean, just think of something that you're talented at doing that people would pay for. Like, for example, my aunt is amazing. Like she is cold at wrapping gifts. What time is quickly approaching us? Christmas, exactly. And even if you don't even celebrate Christmas, this is the time of the year where gifts are exchanged all throughout the next upcoming months. So here's the deal. A lot of people suck at wrapping gifts. I'm one of those people. I'm just telling you, people pay to get their gifts wrapped all the time. Like, let's say, let's say you just went to the store and you bought a pack of gift wrap, right? And let's say it was $10 and it came in a pack of five rolls. Now, let's say you just charge $5 per gift that you wrap. Okay, so that means you have to wrap two presents for somebody in order for your gift wrap that you bought to pay for itself. But honestly, you could get away with charging more than that per gift because guess what? If you're really good at wrapping gifts, they're paying for more than just you wrapping their gift. They're paying for your time. They're paying for your craftsmanship. They're paying for your attention to detail. I also had a friend in high school. He was pretty good at drawing, so he built a personal brand just based off of his art style. He had a very, very unique art style, and people liked it, so what did they do? They asked him to draw stuff for him, and he was like, you know what? I can make money off of this. And he was charging people anywhere from $20 to $60 per design. It was just a really smart business model that he had going for himself. And the more people walked around with his designs, the more people came to him wanting designs. Now, don't get me wrong. You don't have to have a specific talent because some people genuinely feel as if they don't really have any real talent. But despite how people feel about their talents, everybody, absolutely everybody has knowledge in something. So this also goes as far as sharing your knowledge. You can monetize that. All throughout high school and college, ever since I was 14 years old, I have been working out. And I figured out what to eat, what workouts to do, what cardio to do that would optimize my results within my specific body type. And as I transformed from a toothpick to actually building some solid muscle and really developing my biceps, my triceps, my chest, literally everything, an influx of people started coming to me like, hey man, can I work out with you? Men and women, it didn't matter. 
And based on the goals that they told me they wanted to reach, whether it was building muscle, increasing stamina, burning fat, I was able to help them reach their goals. And I helped two of my friends in particular get ripped like super fast within like the first three months of them working out just based off of the program that I had created and figured out over time. And one of the things I got in the habit of doing for myself was actually building individual workout routines that would switch every few months so my body doesn't get used to one specific workout routine. Once my friends started to catch wind of this, they were like, hey, can you build one for me? Can you make one specifically for my body type and for what I want to do? And I, I was that was when I knew. I was like, I could make money off of this if I wanted to. I even build workout routines for like when the gyms close. And speaking of, if the gyms decide to close again, I will find a way to work out just like I did during the first time the gyms closed out. I will do 300 push-ups a day if I have to. I will start curling my cat if I have to or bench pressing my cat if I had to. I mean, shoot, whenever I do push-ups anyway, she jumps on my back. So she obviously wants to help me work out, right? That's for y'all who've been asking me to feature my cat more in my videos. There she is. I hope you were happy. She didn't like being featured in the video. She gave me an earful afterwards. But anyways, there's another example where in, in college, again, school related, but the I hope you get the concept behind this. It's not, it's not necessarily specific to school. It's just any time where you have a group of people that are that can be around you at all times, that's when it's a really good time to, to have a customer base. So for some reason, when it comes to, when it came to physics, I was just really, really good. I mean, with anything relative to science or math, I was just ridiculous on. Like I, I was really good without really even trying. And <laughs> it got to the point where classmates who didn't even know me would walk up to me, "Hey man, what are you doing later? You want to study?" Yeah, I'd be like, "No, I, I don't want to study. I want to study by myself." But, uh, but it got to the point where people that I really knew and was close with, like my friends, I would actually tutor them in subjects that they struggled in for free, like physics. But that just goes to show there were a bunch of people outside of my friend group that would ask me for help with specific subjects. And I, now that I think about it, I could have charged like, all right, for $10. But when I was in college, I honestly wasn't like that. I was very like, I was well known, but I was to myself. So I really didn't want to deal with people like that, kind of like I am now. So I would just give them some advice and I would just keep it moving. I didn't do a whole lot of study groups or anything like that. But what I did do was I put a bunch of study guides together that I knew everything that would be on the test. Like the teachers would give out study guides, but I didn't like the way they were structured. So I kind of just built my own and people were like, hey, can I, can I get your study guide? Again, I could have charged for that. And the whole point of this video is for you to see opportunity and where you can actually make some money. You obviously don't have to jump on every single opportunity. I, I know I didn't, but this video is all about side hustle. So why not, right? But outside of all the nerdy stuff that I keep talking to you about, if you have something that you're just really good at, like let's say you you have a recipe that just slaps, you, you can definitely sell that recipe. People, if they taste your food and they really, really like it, they're like, what did you, what did you put in that? Make your recipe, write it down. You know, you could charge for that. This right here, what I'm about to tell you is going to be the most difficult side hustle to set up. It really is. It doesn't necessarily cost up front, but it just takes a pretty long time to actually set up and see a profit, especially when you compare it to everything else on this list. But here it is. Build an audience online. Notice how I said online and how I didn't say on a specific platform. And we already know we have Facebook, we have Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Now we have TikTok. Sure, you can monetize on all of these platforms. And of course, the most popular way of monetizing is typically through video after you hit certain thresholds and numbers of, of subscribers, followers, and views, whatever the case is for that specific platform. But I want you to think outside of the box because platforms are just that. They're platforms. Platforms can come and go. They might stay for a while, they may not. So I don't want you to put your eggs in one basket like, yeah, I'm gonna go all in on YouTube. Yeah, I'm gonna go all in on Instagram. And then a few years from now, that platform disappears and you're unprepared. That's not cold. Now this right here is what's cold. When you're able to leverage whatever audience you've built on a specific platform, whether it's blogging, whether it's a social media platform, whether it's podcasts, 
you build your own products, whether it's courses, whether it's webinars, or it could be free, it could be monetized, whatever, but you leverage your audience through this chain of what is called an email list. And whenever you come out with something, like for example, on this channel, I've had a few spreadsheets that talk about budgeting and how to really separate and manage your money. And it's, sort of, it's free, but you enter your email in. So in exchange for your email, you get a free budgeting checklist, for example. And now whoever's on the email list will forever be on my email list. So if YouTube goes away tomorrow, you're still on my email list. So I can then email you, hey, I'm expanding on to this platform. Follow me at here. But also in addition to just having the email list for normal communication, expanding to other platforms, whenever you come out with new products or if you're thinking of a new product, you could have something where people who are already interested in your products, you can ask them what they think. And based off of what they think and what the majority wants, you can then create a product based off of that and you can make more courses in the future that you can continue to monetize off of and you're adding value to them. So it's a very even exchange. That's how you make sure it doesn't die off. But the reason it takes so long to do this is because of the simple fact that it takes a while to build an audience. Like you have to get the right recipe of, of information to entertainment to charisma. You know what I mean? Like you have to put all these things and mix them up in such a way that people are attracted to it. And it comes with time. Some people, it happens sooner than later. But here's the thing. Here's why, it, in my opinion, it's the most profitable of everything I'm listing. And it's because of the simple fact that the income that you can get off of this can be completely passive. So you're up front, you put in a lot of work. But after the work is done, you get money every month. The reason I bring up emails is because it's, it's a way of thinking outside of the box in terms of what you can do for your security within your own business, within your own influence, within your circle of influence, so to speak, because you you have the opportunity now more than ever to influence in a, a massive crowd of people just from the comfort of your own home. With that, I think it's important to be mindful of what can be gone at any given moment. That's the way that you can continue to take your audience with you and scale your audience, so to speak. And it's also a way for them to keep in touch with you. So I think it's a, a good thing on both sides. And of course, outside of emails, you can have a website, like an individual website that you pay for that you can host your own products on. And when your email list knows where to go to find your products and find more out about you and maybe have coaching calls, that makes that relationship that much stronger. But again, what's most rewarding about this is the fact that you get passive income from it. And it doesn't come right away at all. Like I just said, it does not come right away at all. Please understand that. But once you achieve it, you come to the realization, now I'm making money in my sleep. Like it took me a year and a half to get my YouTube channel monetized, right? But now I'm getting paid. Like no matter what I'm doing, like have you thought about this? No matter what you're doing, if you're sleeping, if you're showering, if you're eating, no matter what you're doing, you have money that's instantly just caking up in your bank account. Like you're going to get money regardless of what you're doing because you've already put in the time. You put it the work in up front. So now you're now that financial success is coming into your life. Now you just got to stay consistent and the money is going to keep coming regardless of what is going on. If you're sick, you're still getting money. If you're watching TV, you're still getting money. If you're on the plane, you're still getting money. And I just want to take a few seconds to thank you guys for supporting my channel because being monetized feels like I'm on cloud nine. I mean, seriously, I am blown away by the numbers I've been seeing. My subscriber count has like almost tripled within the past like month and a half. It is, it's insane. And the numbers I'm getting from the monetization, they are blowing me away. Seriously, they are. Speaking of online, I saved the easiest and possibly the most boring side hustle for the very end. Being a student research assistant. And again, of course, this is college, but here's the thing. When you're in college, you're already researching pretty much every day anyway. So I saw that as an opportunity. I was like, you know, I do research every day, so I might as well get paid to do it on the side. And it was it was an awesome gig. I mean, it was pretty cool. I mean, you might look at it as boring, like ill research, but it was pretty cool stuff. I mean, I had to go over 
the, the, the process of manufacturing beer and wine. And I had to learn that process like down to a T. It's a very simple process. But the reason I had to learn about it was so I can use my expertise and knowledge. I don't want to say expertise. My, I'll say my book smart. I use my book smarts in terms of process improvement and what I've learned in college to help my professor build a training document that we were developing for a nearby brewery. It was actually really cool stuff. And that was why I got paid. But I'm, but I'm sure there's opportunities all around you that are good research opportunities that can pay you on the side for just something that you do. It felt like a hobby. Like when I, when I would finish my homework, I would just do a couple of hours of research and build some of the training document and send it to my professor. And that was it. Easiest, easiest thing ever. It really did feel like a hobby. I mean, I controlled the hours. I was making $10 an hour. And since it was technically a part-time deal, I couldn't work over like, I think 26 hours, but that was fine by me because I was a busy college student. But yeah, that's a super, super simple side hustle. You can honestly get into stuff like that if you just ask for it, or if maybe if you're a high performer in class, your professor might even approach you. That's what happened to me. But there's there's a ton of different ways to get into stuff like that. You can honestly just ask around and see what you can find, what programs your school has that you know you can do research for on the side. And typically research projects, they will pay you. But now that you've lasted this long, you're going to hear my amazing sermon that I've prepared just for this video. And this is actually a really serious topic, right? So I was, I meant every word I said in the beginning of this video when I said, you know, a lot of us were not prepared for this pandemic. A lot of us were not prepared in terms of savings. A lot of us were not prepared at all. Even businesses weren't prepared. I really want you to be prepared. You know, and I can make I can make hundreds of videos about saving money because I have I have several clever ways to save money. But what I really want you to understand is the mindset around saving money and being secure in that you're saving money. But what good does saving money do if you can't supplement the income that you already have? You know what I mean? If you if you can't add on to the income that you're already having, it's going to make saving worlds like tons harder. It just is. So my thing where I stand on it is I think it's more important to focus, especially if you're younger, to focus on increasing your income and saving at the same time. You can definitely do both because increasing your income doesn't necessarily mean that you have to spend any of your money. Like when I built my first side business of drumming that I was just talking about, I, I didn't spend any money on that. It was very simple to do, and maybe I can make a whole video on just me building that business from scratch, which didn't take long at all. It took like a day, literally like a day. So what I'm saying is keeping your priorities straight in all of this is what's very important because I, what I don't want is for this stuff to blow over with all this pandemic mess going on. I don't want that to blow over and then everybody is just like going back to normal where they're just spending their money on crap that they don't need, getting further into debt. And then when something like this happens, they're like sit, sitting around with, with their lip poked out. Ooh, I, I'm, I'm broke. I, no, there's none of that. That's not cold. You're supposed to be prepared for this stuff. You're a grown adult. You are responsible for your own financial situation. I don't care how harsh that sounds. It is the truth. If you can't afford to stay where you're staying due to a pandemic, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, if you are in a situation right here, right now, you need to figure out a way to build another stream of income. For some people that's getting a side job or, or that's, for some people that's getting a part-time job on the side. I personally don't recommend that. I think there's a lot more money in getting a side hustle. Like the, the side hustles I just named, that's hundreds of dollars a day. A part-time job isn't necessarily gonna pay you that. Plus it's not gonna come with the amount of stress that a part-time job is gonna have. And you probably won't even be as tired as you would doing these as you would doing a part-time job. But it's not that hard to do. Um, it'll take a little bit of work, a little bit of effort, but you can totally do it. I mean, I just want you to be as prepared as you can possibly be because when this whole pandemic thing hit, like, sure, I was like, man, I'm kind of uneasy about this, but at the end of the day, my finances were prepared for any and everything that was going to go down. They just work. And we need to focus more on building wealth than saving money. There's a total difference. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.